like I'm in Hollywood and I want to report a murder. I'm Detective Sergeant Lloyd Hopkins with the police department. It's about Julie Neymar. You know, actually, I was thinking about calling you guys. You know, I just didn't know what to say. Why'd you kill her? There's a dangerous man on the loose. All I care about is stopping this maniac before he kills again. Do you understand? Come on, Dutch. You'll blow away a broad's date. The least you can do is drive her home. His boss thinks he's trouble. If you go to the media, I'll crucify you. You had a bad day, didn't you? How can you tell? You always shake just a little. His friends think he's crazy. No one day suspended from the force, breaking and entering, robbery, and now possible murder. What do you got lined up for tonight? Women think he's a menace. Oh. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Try to think of a three-letter word for explosive. You're a cop. You gotta take me in. Well, there's some good news and there's some bad news. The good news is you're right, I'm a cop and I gotta take you in. The bad news is I've been suspended and I don't give a f Cop. James Woods in the most startling performance of his career with Leslie Ann Warren and Charles Durning. When a man cares too much, how far is too far? everybody and welcome to the third episode of drive-in double feature i'm nathan and i'm ryan and today we are watching cop from 1988 starring james woods and directed by james b harris do you have any experience with cop yeah well you know i used to watch the show all the time i thought it had a great theme song you know bad boys bad, bad boys. boy mm-hmm. what are they gonna so you know in preparation i watched a couple episodes of cops and i thought it was a little weird you recommended this one but you know i was like yeah you know it's not a bad show i'll watch a couple episodes we could talk about it mm-hmm. i hope you watch the best <laughs> the best episodes you know Oh, yeah. Only only the, the highest rated episodes. Yeah, of course. But no, that's not that's not what we were supposed to watch. What are you doing? Oh, of course. I I know which movie you're talking about. But no, I literally never heard of it before you told me. So zero experience going into it. Yep. Same. I literally saw someone rate it on a letterbox last week. And I just saw there was a movie called Cop with James Woods playing a cop. And you know what? It has very little views. It looks interesting. I like cop movies. So <laughs> and I it's free. It. And it's free on Tubi. So, well then, wh- what are your feelings on James Woods then? I guess that would be a good question. I think he's a, I, he's a decent enough actor. I mean, personal, his personal views aside, I... I, I remember liking him in uh, Salvador. Salvador, was, the Oliver Stone yeah. movie. Yeah, I, I liked him a lot in that one. He's really good. Um, he does another movie where he was actually nominated for an Academy Award, I think, Ghosts of Mississippi, I believe. I, but I again, like, it's never, I've never been like, oh, let me check out the James Woods. But it's, I mean, okay, well, I guess I should take that back. I do love Hades from Hercules. Of course, yeah. That's who I was that's who I was going to bring up. Like he has such a distinct and recognizable voice. And I remember just Hades always stood out to me as a kid. He's the perfect fit for that character. It's he's got a great voice for it. He does. I mean, he's even in the Kingdom Hearts video game, so he he's he's all in on Hades. I think he's pretty much done like every iteration of hercules that he comes back every time so paycheck you know <laughs> hey once you get those disney gigs i wouldn't let go either i'd be uh, those all the no. time yeah unlike kevin spacey who's like i don't want to touch bug's life ever again i'm never gonna do that voice again like why get that money kevin he should have touched that voice role instead of touching other things <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no i i i actually really like james woods as an actor personal feelings his like persona on like twitter and everything 
not a great person, not a really good person, but I do think he's really good. Same thing. Salvador, I actually watched today before the show, which is funny. He's great in that. He's really good in that. I really like him in this. And I think why he fits this role so much is this movie's about a scumbag cop. And you know what he is in real life? He's kind of a scumbag. I think think it would be a good time to talk about it, but it's... Are you able to separate the artist from the piece of art? Yes, I I, I can. I I generally live by the rule, if somebody does something really awful, and it's pre them being like an awful person, or doing that awful act, I'm good with it. I just don't really like paying for it. That's my kind of deal. So like Chinatown is still one of my favorite movies, you know, Roman Polanski's a piece of garbage. I will not pay for that piece of art. I will not give him my money, but I will watch it and enjoy it. I mean, it's a really sad state because <laughs> if you can't almost, if you had to go by like, I'm never watching this piece of art because somebody did something terrible, you'd almost never be able to watch any type of movie. <laughs> that's a sad state of affairs for the world, but yeah. that's, it's the truth. Yeah. Wouldn't that but, be sad? Like, cause like Harvey Weinstein produced so many movies. Yeah. And if I was like, I'm never going to do watch anything he touched, we would, be, <laughs> that'd be a whole lot of movies you'd knock out. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a lot of best of lists you're taking out, but I, you have to, and I, I have to, too. And there's, I, I guess, I don't mind supporting, well, not supporting, but I don't mind watching art, like I said, that's from their past. But anything post their controversy that comes out, I'm probably never going to watch or mm-hmm. or own or anything like that. So that's 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 my feelings on it. But It sounds like we have pretty similar feelings. But yeah, no, he is a total sleazy scumbag in this movie and just a just an awful person. <laughs> yeah, no, he is he is not a good person. He, you know, he, he plays a cop, but he he is the worst version of a cop. This is like a proto like bad lieutenant. Yeah. It's kind of like a mixture of both for me. It's cuz it's it does have like noir type of elements to it, but uh it's also has like that action like at rogue cop movie. So mm-hmm. If you did, if you kind of did this amalgamation between the two, that's this is the type of movie that I think you'd get. This movie does get put down as like a neo noir. I don't think it fits that mold incredibly well. Kind of like you said, I, I think that's a good way to describe it is that it's like a mix of multiple things. Just to kind of put in the context of how this cop is, it almost cares to obsessed with being a cop. Is he has a daughter? And it's one of my favorite scenes. He goes to his daughter and is instead of giving her like a normal bedtime story is explaining about like street scum that have committed crimes and how he caught them and shot them and and killed them to her. Like it was a great. Oh yeah. Well, he, he does, he does not hold back anything. He just goes and like tells her all these really gruesome stories of like, Oh yeah. He, this guy was addicted to Coke. He was, you know, he was a piece of shit. Like he's just cursing and swearing, like, and, talking about shooting bad guys and his daughter's loving it. So it's this weird, like touching scene at first, but then immediately afterward, his wife is like, what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. She's a little girl and that gets him going. Cause he, he has this weird opinion of women. His opinion of women in this movie is, I don't know. It, it's, it's gross. It's, it's so gross. Yeah. He, because he, what he does is he's pretty much just like, the world is a pretty shitty place. And the sooner that girls know about it, the sooner they can toughen up and just not let it run him over. Because he's like, you, you can't have this image of these white knights coming to save you because they're never there. And he's he's already talking about like, you know, his, his daughter's going to grow up. He's like, I don't want my daughter to grow up and be like this prostitute on the side of the road. Or <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. he just, he just automatically assumes like the worst for women. And that if women are just like totally stupid and they're just going to end up as like these naive, like people that are going to just end up like the world's going to come crashing down on them. Uh, it, yeah. Just a really like weird character trait to have, but it makes sense in the context of just this person, this, this cop. And we don't really, we don't really get the sense of like how he turned out this way or like what his wife even saw in him in the first place. Right. Right. So yeah, he tells the story to his daughter about all the stuff that's gone on. And then immediately he just starts arguing with his wife and just, 
just just totally going off on her, just like losing his shit, like to his wife, and like and, yeah, and like <laughs> and I feel like in most rogue cop kind of movies or cops that become obsessed with things, the wife is usually always like, "You used to be so much nicer, and then this happened, and that's why you're so obsessed." No, that never really gets explained. He's just kind of an asshole. Yeah. He just, he loves his job that so much. So like once he gets done at work, he comes home for like 30 minutes and he's like, Oh yeah, let's, I, oh, there's another case going on. Let me, let me head out. Uh, the one thing I do want to say, the movie actually started really funny that I thought was, it's like this guy, he's trying to call for the police, but he doesn't know to dial 911. So oh, yeah, <laughs> he, call, he calls information and they're like, like, sir, you need to dial the emergency line. He's like, oh, yeah, but what, what's the number for that? He's like, nine, one, one. Oh, man, I got to burn another quarter. And just like, <laughs> he's like fumbling for like quarters. And and he's he, he, he keeps calling like the wrong number. And like, he calls 911 and 911's like, all oh, lines are busy right now. Please try again later. Yeah, and this is the opening <laughs> titles of the movie. It's like black and the names are going and it has this guy like, oh, I, I need to get it. <laughs> like, I got to put another quarter in. What a weird opening credits. Like, I, I think it's... Because you think it's going to be like this this comedic film at first and then it's totally not and so. it doesn't really have any jokes after that point i think it has like some things that are funny but like in like a dark humor kind of way right um, but i guess uh, the kind of like the whole plot of this movie is james woods does discover a dead body and he soon links it to a serial killer murdering multiple women and it's about his obsession and his all of the dirty things he will do to catch this killer. See, like I was kind of hoping it was going to be like this serial killer chase movie type of thing. And it's just to like this obsessive level, but there's a lot of other plot lines going on too. And Mm -hmm. like, he'll just, he'll just decide like, Oh, well I'm going to go deal with this other case instead. And he handles it. He handles all these like in really extreme fashions where (laughs) They go and bust this other guy for drugs and the guy like starts to run away. And instead of trying to stop him, he just blasts him and just murders him in cold blood. Yeah. And here's one of the dark humor bits where like the, the man he blasts away, his girl is there and he tells like his partner, like, Hey, you're, you're going to drive her home, right? You got, I just blew away her boyfriend. You might as well take her home. And I think he's implying that he was going to take her home and, and, and sleep with her. I'm almost positive that's what happened. We see later in this movie, he has no problem cheating on his wife and yeah. sleeping with murder suspects or anybody that's involved with this murder. It just, yeah. he doesn't care if it's going to screw up the entire case. Cause so that's what I thought. Like I thought this guy was going to be this really super type of cop. And, Cause at the beginning of the movie, he knows like the lay of the land and like other cops are coming to him. He's probably like, Oh, well you should do this, do this, do that. But instead, he just shows he has zero moral compass, and he doesn't care if it's going to blow the case wide open. If he wants to, you know, get in the mood, he will have no problem sleeping with any woman that's involved in this case. Yeah, and it's like, too, like an extreme level. There's like a a girl that had obviously went through a horrible trauma early in her life with men finally opens up to him because for some reason she sees something in this man. And he, he goes on and just like, runs away from her treats her like garbage and runs away like she tells his her story of like her trauma and he just goes like well i just got the whole enchilada like he says that yeah. to her it's like i what? know it, it just has no problem taking advantage of these emotionally vulnerable women and he's basically just like you know are we gonna have sex or what like i just heard i just sat here and listened to your whole blah 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 life story let me let me get some action going on i'm just i hate i hated him so much <laughs> yeah he, he's he's definitely like uh it's definitely one of those movies where you follow just like a completely unlikable person so yeah he's trying to track down this murder but they there's so many wild assumptions in here like there's one that's like they find like this dead girl and they're like, Oh, well, obviously the woman didn't kill herself because women don't shoot themselves with guns. 
I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Whoever wrote this movie had some weird. I I I, I smell a little bit of a woman hating on this script, just a little. <laughs> That somebody has got some very serious issues they need to work on because this is this is there's a lot of there's a lot of problematic material in this movie. Think, speaking of which, I think about like uh, there's like a gang of gay prostitutes, and they are oh, yeah. the most flamboyant looking prostitutes in the world. It's, this guy, uh, this guy's got has hair that's like three feet high. Yeah, it's like this, and it's a, and it's a mullet too. So his mullet is like blown out, and it's like really long in the back too. Yeah, and he and he's like walking around with his his uh, his other gang gang members, and he's like, "Oh, you can eat my asshole." It's so stupid. It's it yeah, it's really weird, and <laughs> he, they they just go on and on. And I wouldn't say it's not well paced, but it has a problem I have with like. No more noirish films, where I think there's too many plot lines. It tries too many things to go too many different places and doesn't really have a straight line, right? Like, like you said, I wish it had more of, I'm going to hunt the serial killer. Here's the clues, but it, it tries to add on more layers and layers. I, yeah, it it was it's trying to tell like this really windy story, but it's more focused on this guy's relationships and like how his life is just spiraling out of control. And it, to me, like the serial killer plot point, like almost takes like a back burner. And then like the last 30 minutes of the movie, it's like, Oh yeah, there's a serial killer on the loose. Let's figure that out. I guess it's more of a character study. It's definitely, it's definitely like that rogue type of cop where he doesn't play by his own rules. And at one point he does get suspended. And while he's suspended, you know, because he has no problem bringing like these women that everyone clearly knows is not his wife to like these like company functions. What is and, that? And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Oh yeah, here's my here's my lady friend." And everyone's like, "What?" Like even his partner is like, "What the hell?" The captain is here, and you brought <laughs> you brought a girlfriend because this captain's super religious too, and he clearly brought a woman that's not his wife. So here, the captain already knows what's up and already doesn't like him. Uh, or the other cops in there love him, but also at other times I feel like they hate him. Like the captain, he walked into him to like get because he wants the files on these murder people from like 15 years ago. And the captain's like, I like your work. I think you do a good job, but I'm not going to do this for you. You know, and he says he likes him. And then other times the captain's like, I hate you. You go against the rules all the time. Well, yeah, it's like a, he just starts his whole life loses control because he does have like a like a older veteran type of cop as his partner. Mm-hmm. And the, they, they're kind of buddy, buddy at first, but this guy goes so far off the grid that even his partner is like, what the hell is wrong with you? And it, he's like having to like basically help him keep his job and not get arrested because he goes so far off the grid that he's going to, he's like ambushing people at their house, like sneaking in there without any warrants. Mm-hmm. And then at one point, he murders one of the suspects in, in the guy's house because he's like trying to ambush him and like get a confession out of him. And they don't arrest him. They're just like, you're, he's like, you just shot this guy. You're on thin ice, buddy. And he, he's doing all this like stuff on the side. He even shows up after not being a cop to the police station for an interrogation. And they're just like, hey, you shouldn't be here. But also, I like your work. Right. And I'm like, why is he here? I thought he was suspended. And then the woman, so the woman that's there is this woman that he basically betrayed because he did take valuable information from her. He took her diary and she's like, you used me. You know, you're just trying to get info out of me. And everyone's just like, he, they let him sit in on the interrogation. And they're, everyone's just like, okay, just shut up. Don't say anything. Just soak in the information. And he's... He's such an insane person. He can't keep his mouth shut and just starts screaming at this woman that he, that did not do anything wrong in the first place. And he's just acting like, like she's like this nutcase. And like, and obviously she's in like a dark place, but he, he obviously doesn't care. So he's self-centered. I don't want to fully give away the ending, but I do want to say, I do like the final moments of this movie, specifically the final moment. 
There's something about it in its delivery that I love. Did you? I did. I did. I, I don't know. I I thought it was just the right amount of cheese. I, I don't know. It's It definitely ends like a cop movie from the 80s, like how it yeah. would normally end. But it's, I, I, I don't know. I was more just sitting there like, because the moment happens, it's very abrupt. And then the credits just start rolling. <laughs> it and, just and cuts the, to black, I should say. It just, boom, cuts the I'm, black. So I don't know if I liked it so much. It's just mm-hmm. it, because we do have like, I mean, you kind of figured they, they, they do have like this final showdown and mm-hmm. it's that the moments are kind of tense, but then when, when the final moment happens, it's like, that's it. Like, and like, like I said, his wife decides to leave him in the very beginning. He pays almost, he doesn't even care about his wife and kid being gone from his life. They are, they're never mentioned again. Yeah. They just, they're gone. <laughs> ever and this is like in the first 10 minutes of the movie his wife and child leave him and they decide to never bring up this plot point ever again and said he's just sleeping with these random women that ha- have to do with his murder case they're all very sensitive subject matters so it's i just don't feel like any of the a lot there's a lot of loose plot points at the at the very end i, I think there's a lot of stuff that could have been tied up mm-hmm. and it doesn't to me it's just kind of like oh well we don't, we got nothing left. Let's just end it. So yeah, yeah. It it just ends. No, I I get that point of view. Don't, don't get me wrong. Maybe I do think there's some stuff left over, but there was something about it that I don't know. I liked its amount of cheese. It was very, a very cheesy one liner to end your movie on. And I'm, I'm a little bit of a sucker for it. I don't know. (laughs) No, I, I, I do get that. I mean, there's, it it definitely feels like a like I said a typical eighties like action type of yeah. movie where it's like the snappy one liner. So yeah. it's a but as a whole though, I don't I I can't say I, I like the movie as a whole. It's mm-hmm. it's I didn't hate it, but it's not one that I'm gonna be revisiting anytime soon either. Yeah, I I think I liked it a bit more than you. I, I, I had a good time with it. <laughs> It has problems, it has issues. I still wouldn't recommend it to a lot of people, but there's something about James Wood's performance. He, he It's very off the rails. He plays such a horrible person. And I guess I enjoy, like, yeah. I both, ha- you hate to watch him, but you love to watch him at the same time. And I think that's, I got enjoyment out of that. Which I will say, if the James Wood is very good in this movie, and I I do recommend his performance in it. But I just, I guess if I want to see a, like a cop like losing it or being like the turtle, typical dirty cop type of movie, I think there's other movies that have done it better, in my opinion. Yeah, no, and I, I can totally agree with that. So, yeah, I think that's about it, unless you have anything to add. There was one scene where he's uh, having sex with a woman and uh, they're making breakfast at the same time and they burn the bacon. And I wrote down in my notes, they ruined the bacon. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, it's so stupid. It's like that. Um, that's on the office, right? Where he has the George Foreman grill next to his bed and he cooks. Breakfast. I know yeah. this movie would have been more entertaining if James Wood's foot got clamped onto a George Foreman. Grill. Yeah. That, that would have, that would have been pretty good. That's- yes. Um, oh, I guess another quick note in that final moment. I don't know if you noticed this. It went into the first person camera mode, but they made it slow mo. Anytime it went in the first person, and it looked horrible. It was really bad. I didn't notice that, but I, I it doesn't surprise me. So what you're saying is, is they invented first person shooters? Yes, yeah, they invented uh, Call of Duty. Yes, yeah. So it's worth watching for that. Yes, definitely. Quick time events. A lot of those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot. Of, yeah. It's like heavy rain, right? Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> but cool. Well, what are we doing next? Well, Nathan, we'll be talking. We're going a little anime again because I know how much you love anime. So oh, no. I thought we would I thought we'd do another one. Well, this will be our first anime for this show for a drive Absol- drive and double feature. And definitely not the last. I can say that with 100% fact. So <laughs> but we will be talking about 1983's Golgo 13, which is free of course on Tubi. Got to love Tubi. It's, it, it amazes me, their catalog. I mean, you're not going to find your blockbuster movies in there, but I mean, if you're, like I said before, if you're looking for these random movies, you're like, there's no way any streaming service would have it. Um, 
Tupi probably has it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's what I've been doing. I've been on my Letterboxd watch list. I just put in streaming service Tubi, and yeah, it has all of my weirdo movies on my list. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's it's great and I we really appreciate them for doing that, for keeping the spirit of these movies alive. If you wanna participate in the discussion, uh please go out and watch the movie before we go and uh we'll be sure to talk about it and let you know what we think. Yeah. Um I'm Nathan. And I'm Ryan. And uh, have a have a great rest of your night. See you next time. See you next time.